Hello people, I'm Data from JGX, and uh, here we are with May patch notes. The patch will drop on May the 24th. So uh, this is a pretty big patch. We have a new skill tree, uh, new packs, new mech packs. Uh, we have uh, some changes on the layout. We have new game mode. We have quirks, we have weapons. Just don't freak out. I'll just explain this stuff one by one. Um, on most of these things, like specific skill tree, um, specific mech quirks, like one mech one by one, I'll have to do separate videos because otherwise it's just too long. I'm just going to include the um, a platinum, the new platinum review inside the patch note video because I noticed that when I do it separately, not that many people are interested. So at the end of this video, I'm going to include a review on uh, the new Platinum collection to let you know if it is worth or not worth to buy these uh, and if you already bought them how to um, improve the performance of these mechs. Uh, I want to start from the stuff that I think is the most relevant, uh, the most impacting on the gameplay, so weapon changes and quirk changes. Starting from the top, weapon adjustments, energy weapons, Kalani R large laser increased the laser duration from 1.25 to 1.35. Usual anti-range BS on this, like right now everyone knows that the most efficient way to farm quick play is mid-range, like DACA, laser vomit, and short-range lights, machine guns, small pulses, and so on. ER large lasers, from my experience, uh, they can do something on some specific maps like Alpine Peaks, but uh, since the map design shifted more and more into um, brawl favoring maps, maps where you can actually hide wherever you want, for example, HPG Manifold Basement, uh, with even more structure around the basement than the ones that were there before, or uh, Emerald Vale, a lot of cover in the middle, a lot of trees to stop long-range sniping, a lot of ways to jump at the back of those who snipe from the back. Hellebore just doesn't have any possibility whatsoever to shoot above 500 meters. Like, the way the main meta goes right now, everything that shoots past 600 meters it's pretty much completely useless because you are trading your laser duration and your damage and uh, e extra heat for what? For extra range that you don't even use because you can just get it 500 meters, 600 meters as easy as you want. So you just take a faster mech that goes 600 meters, 500 meters engagement and for less heat you deal more damage. So these weapons, even as they stand right now, they are almost useless. After these nerfs, you just better take the R large and just sell all of them because they, they just don't make any sense. Um, that's what I'm going to do. After this patch, I'm going to take all the Klani R larges. I'm going to sell them. Klani R PPC. Uh, this is a strange one. This is a weird one. Um, Klani R PPCs and uh, Inner sphere medium pulses were some weapons that initially uh, that initially we um, agreed that we wouldn't have touched. They were they were the baseline, but now we're buffing them. Why? Objectively, Klanier PPCs are underperforming. Um, the reason why is a bit uh, deeper than what uh, inexperienced people may think. Um, like the most inexperienced players just look at PPCs and they compare them with ER larges and they say okay a quad ER PPC mech is going to lose against an ER large mech therefore the ER large mech is over buffed it isn't so like this is just like watching at the night sky with a telescope only and losing the view of the entire sky it doesn't make any sense even as they, as they stand, like PPCs, drag power from the jump jets. PPCs 
drag power from the jump jets. So three PPCs, no jump jets, it's one thing. Three PPCs with jump jets, it's a completely another thing. As they stand right now, even without buffs, PPC pop tarts are perfectly able to kill laser long la long range laser boats just by pop tarting. So arguably, it's ER largest that should be buffed even further. The point is though that static PPC traders don't win, and they can't because if you buff PPCs to the point that non jump jet traders win all the trades, then, since they drag power from jump jets, those with jump jets are going to be completely broken, like Chris Patch in May. This is what cannot happen, this is not the way of the balance. But still they had to get buffed. Why? Because before the agility pass, with Clanier PPCs, you could reliably hit pretty much everything in their optimal range. Post agility pass, most of the pseudo lights, like max from 45 tons down, they have had so many insane agility buffs, accel, decel, turn rate, that they can literally dodge PPCs at will. So since the cauldron um, increased the amount of pseudo lights in the game, the percentages are clear, we, we increased the amount of lights and mediums in the game by far, the, the regular Clanier PPC user uh, finds himself in the condition where he cannot reliably hit half of the mechs present on the battlefield. So if I am there and out of those 12 mechs I cannot hit reliably in my optimal range, which is 923 meters, half of those, why the hell should I use this weapon? So ideally, if we didn't have to touch Clanier PPC, it would have had to nerf the agility of the whole pseudo light class as a whole, which is, I think, what should have been done. But uh, apart, I, the way I see it, the Cauldron has some sort of bias in favor of uh, light play. This is my personal take on how the things go um, lately, in the last year. And so at least we increased uh, the clan PRPPC velocity. This is going to give a marginal buff. This is going to help hitting fast movers um, at a little bit more range. Nothing that crazy. I don't think this is nearly enough, but at least it's a step in the good direction. Ballistic weapons, machine guns, what's happening here? They, basically, the way they work, the, the crits work, when a component is open, a weapon has a certain chance to deal a crit. A crit on the weapons and a crit on the structure. And after this chance rolls, there is a certain multiplier that multiplies the damage. So instead of doing one damage, a certain machine gun can do nine damage. Yeah, basically the NAC ten damage. Yeah, okay. What's happening here? Uh, right now, I, I think at this point it should be clear to everyone that uh, small max with machine guns and small pulses, micro pulses, and all that kind of crap are completely overpowered, broken bullshit, and those the kind of griefing play style finally is starting to get on everyone nerves. Uh, because it's just ridiculous that a 20, 30 tonner can just demolish everything on the battlefield and then on top of that be able to play the objectives. Because don't forget that those kind of mechs don't only demolish everything on the battlefield, which is something that heavies and assaults should do, but they also play the objective. Cap, lock for lerms, scout, and so on stuff that assaults can't even do. So right now assaults are in the condition where they deal less or the same as these broken mechs and they can't even play the objective. So this is just disgusting, the situation is just disgusting. What are we doing here? Reduce critical damage multiplier. Basically this is a minuscule nerf 
to what machine guns are able to do on open components. Is this going to address the problem? Not even close. This is not even close because this is just the tip of the iceberg. These mechs are way more broken than this. Why? Because even the base DPS, without accounting at all the crits, so these numbers could drop to zero. These numbers could drop to zero, those mechs would be overpowered anyways. Because it's the base DPS that it's too high. When you have a 20 toner that runs 150 kph, 120, 110, and does the same DPS of a DACA assault that goes 40 kph, that mech is broken. And these mechs are able to do that even without the crit multipliers. You could turn this to zero and those mechs would be overpowered anyways. Because the way they are overpowered is by abusing that DPS. And then Pepegas come out and say, okay, but they already had the DPS before the cauldron. Why they weren't broken before? We should nerf them because we didn't buff machine guns. Uh, that's false because weapons don't walk on the battlefield by themselves. Weapons walk on the battlefields equipped on mechs. And if you take a mech that uses these weapons and you double its agility and you double its durability on armor, and agility is also a way to increase the survivability through lag shield. So basically you are tripling the survivability of these mechs a bit through agility and a bit through survival quirks themselves. Then you're giving these mechs the ability to put out that DPS that before they couldn't. Because before they would get one shot. Now with all that agility, all that survival, they don't get one shot anymore if you skill tree them properly. And if you actually activate more than two neurons in the brain at the same time and you start moving. And then, of, of course, these mechs went to be able to do zero, because they just get one shot, to be able to do as much as a DACA assault. On top of that, you add a broken agility pass. Assault mechs can't turn, can't twist, can't move, can't do anything. They're just punch balls for punching bags punching bags for, for these uh, mechs, this is not nearly enough. Like, this is a joke. This is, is just a joke. What we need to fix the current situation is a proper assault mech agility pass. Like, agility on ass assaults needs to be able to move and shoot packs because, because this is not PvE, where you go there and you just farm an object. Inside those assaults that get stripped and demolished and farmed every fucking day, there are people. Those people rage quit the game because they get killed by something that they can't even see. And even if they see it, they can't even turn, move or fight back. There is no fight. These mechs are so broken that they win without fighting. So this stuff, is it going to help? No, nothing is going to change here. Especially because on the clan machine guns, they are also increasing the ammo. Going further, missile weapons. Uh, these were already weapons that were good before the cauldron. This is another example of cyclic overbuff. Um, before the cauldron, SRM bombers were the main brawlers. Assassins, for example. Um, and they were actually super strong. If you take an assassin with SRMs, you're already able to demolish in a brawl a laser mech, like a laser vomit heavy. They, they can already do that. They didn't need this kind of buff. The problem is that SRM mechs all of a sudden fall short compared to what? To machine guns and to small pulses and to light PPCs. Why? Because those weapons are overbuffed. So at first you overbuff small pulses and machine guns. And after that, you overbuff again SRMs. No, you just drop back what you have overbuffed and you stop buffing and buffing and buffing and buffing non stop. These ones are completely unneeded because SRM bombers are already able to out brawl mid range or long range mech. 
they just get shit on by small pulses and machine guns because small pulses and machine guns are overbuffed. Equipment adjustments, they just put ISTCs in line with, uh, with clan TCs, nothing special. This is big one, the heavy metal, jump jet radical shake removed. Basically, when you jump, usually your radical shakes. And if you shoot, you shoot once in Congo and one in Zimbabwe. Now, you'll be able to jump jet up and shoot while you're using the jump jets. I don't know if this is going to be OP. I'm afraid that it could be, but I'm not sure. I wouldn't bet my right hand on this. I'll have to try this Mac. I'll have to try this. This one is another stupid abnormous buff to brawl light play because uh, what you used to do with this is that you spot a light mech and you can keep watching at it where it goes through the wall for 10 seconds on the minimap. Now, 5 seconds. So the mech just goes away and you lo lose track of where it is going and it is going to backstab you even more <laughs> than before. So this is a gigantic buff to light brawl play. So those things, Piranha OP is breaking the game, blah blah blah, just with this is going to get even more broken than what it actually is. Some uh, fixes, okay, blah blah blah. Uh, let's go to the works. Rothnex, these ones are getting decent. I'll have to do a video on uh, Rothnex, just hold on. Uh, these are actually good. Adjustments to preview square passes, same, I'll have to do a video on the fleas. You'll start seeing videos like flea OPs breaking the game because this, this stuff paired with uh, uh, this thing, target spotted now is just going to track those ones for five seconds. So what happens is that you get spotted once, you run away, and then you get tracked for only five seconds instead of ten, and you just disappear, go wherever you want and just pop again in the bed of somebody, strip it all his weapons, and then run away again. It's going to work even more. Light fanboys hit again. Uh, mist links. Um, many of these are adjustments for the SRMs. So SRMs are getting a 10% heat buff across the board. So the strongest SRM max got a 5% heat reduction. So, the strongest SRM max, what, what is going to happen is that the strongest SRM max are getting just a 5% buff. While the weak ones, arguably the weak ones, I don't know, they're getting 10% buff. Minor buffs to the riflemen, uh, some set of 8 of the timber, I'll have to do a set of 8 pass on the timber. Um, this one, Orion's Coal, it's a mech that people just didn't understand. This mech has been completely broken. Clan LPL is already very strong. And this is a Clan LPL boat with heat range. Mask. Extreme survival quirks. Crit chance receiving. Range. This is a clan LPL boat that tanks like an Atlas and goes 100 kph, 105 kph. This is broken. And people haven't realized it. I purposely didn't do videos on this one because I didn't want people to legit break the game with this one. This is a mech with no equals. It has range, it can snipe, it can brawl, it can run, it can cap. This is, right now, like if you try it today or tomorrow, this is the, the mech of God. With four large pulses and a fast engine. Same thing for the PPCs. Uh, we are reducing some velocity quirks on uh, PPC mechs that are already pretty good, like the Warhawk, the Warhammer, uh, the Highlander 2CA. They don't really correspond exactly to the amount 
to the increase we did, but somehow yep, it's still reducing the velocity so the buff doesn't stack as much or some good PPC max. Now, let's go from the top, event Q. What is event Q? Uh, it's a new combo of game modes. What are they doing here? Uh, they do, a, a, it works like this. There is a timer and you have a specific game mode for that specific time, four days, 11 hours from now. It tells you what mechs are allowed in this game mode and it tells you what specific quirks there are. Infinite ammo, double max speed, double weapon cooldown, blah, 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 third person only, uh, and so on. So it's actually weird. Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, this way here has potential. Seriously, it has potential. But if they do stuff that is that stupid, because this is, this is stupid, this is just stupid, messing stuff in this way just makes the game look completely weird, broken, like a, a, a when you mod your Skyrim and Fallout game and, and it's just inject god weapons and Chinese bitches all over the place and you break the immersion with the game. And this is what we are doing here, like what the fuck is double max speed, infinite ammo, double cooldowns, 100 more arm. What is what is this? This ma this game mode has potential, but needs to be implemented by activating all the neurons inside the brain, not just by making one work at a time. That like this is just gonna look a weird mod, and it's gonna look like shit. That this doesn't work. Skill tree improvements. What are they doing to skill tree? Uh, I'll do a specific video on skill tree in the in the in these days. Just to cut it short, they are um, separating the skills so you can better choose what you want. You won't have to respect from zero, so the actual nodes that you have unlocked stay. You will, you will be able to have a better customization because you'll be able to remove some nodes that you don't want and put nodes that you want. Some overpowered nodes, like full rate of deprivation, full speed weak, are still getting gated behind other nodes, but stuff like I want f full heat, you can just full heat. I want full cooldown, you go full cooldown, and so on. Is this good? Yes, it is good, because it helps you um, specialize your mech better. They also give you five uh, extra skills. Um, G sorry, five extra red points, the GSP per mech. You're still capped at 91, but they will give you five points for free, just as a gift. Quirk display and information update. This is good. Uh, right now, you have to go in the store to understand which quirks come from the base and which quirks come from the skill tree. Now they have different colors. So you are able to understand which quirks come from the base mech and which quirks you added by quirking the skill tree. This is excellent. We have been asking this for years. Because right now, if you want to know that, you need to go in the mech lab and check the quirks from the, uh, sorry, in the store and check them from the store every time. And in the end, we have Platinum Collection. I'm going to go over this very shortly because apparently people are not that interested. Spider 5D. Is it good? One of the best mechs in the game right now. I think it should be even nerfed. Three light PPCs. This mech is just the most cancerous griefer mech in the game right now. It has... Um, Absurd agility, range, heat efficiency, cooldown, ECM. It's a fucking troll. Like, this doesn't make sense. You can shoot for days and farm people. They can't react. They can't see you. You can run away whenever you want. Cicada. 
decent Mac, three light PPCs and an Ultra 2. It has ECM as well. This is the ECM Cicada. Sorry if my voice is getting lower, but uh, this video is actually pretty long and I'm getting pretty tired. Uh, light PPCs, Ultra 2, and an ECM. You can also do other stuff, of course, if you want, like uh, lasers and a bigger ACs. This is what I would do. Anyways, Jaeger Mac DD, you guys know this Mac. This is pretty common. It's a, it's a DAC about. King Crab Triple Zero. King Crab Triple Zero is the one with the six ballistics. Since the AC5 buffs, uh, instead of running just six AC2s, you could do. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. <clears throat> you could do four AC5s and two AC2s and two light PPCs with a big Excel. At least you have more firepower, you're faster. If you load an LFE, you lose one torso, you lose most of your weapons. You lose the other torso, you lose all of your heat dissipation and your stick anyways, so just put Excel and fuck it. This one is uh, the Incubus with six small pulses high mount. Or you can do six medium lasers high mount. They all shoot from the cockpit, decent mag. Beagle 3, it's the most versatile. You can do two PPCs here and one PPC here, so three PPC Mac, or three large pulse, or one, two, three ATM-12 popped out, very strong Mac. It's a Mac that people know, so I'm not going to stop here. This is straightforward, just six small pulse and a micro laser in the arm, easy. This is a Mac that everyone knows, so I'm not going to stop here. Hellfire A, this is a Mac that people have no idea how good it is. This was... Um, uh, the king of Solaris Division 4 for a long time. People just ignore this Mac, they don't know how good it is. Um, especially now with the SRM heat buff. This one is 4 SRM6s, 4 small pulses, an LB10, a mask. And it's getting heat buff on the SRMs. This is one of the strongest brawlers in the game by far. Kodiak 3, the most overrated mech in the game. Uh, you could do it 4 AC-10s and a PPC, or 2 Ultra 10s and 2 Ultra 5s. By the way, this mech was shit before the cauldron, and still is. Why? Because it's gigantic, it's huge, it doesn't move. It doesn't have armor, like, this torso only has 90 armor. Like, an urban mech is as small as, like, a quarter of this torso, and has, like, five times the armor. As soon as you sneeze on this torso, this torso is going to pop up. This mech is shit. <laughs> you should not use a Kodiak 3. It doesn't do anything. Any half-decent player is going to look at you and you're going to lose a torso straight away. That's it for today, guys. We're done. Long patch. Interesting one. I'm looking forward for solving this issue with uh, the Light Cancer Brawl backstab. Uh, if you guys want to support me, remember to go to follow the link that I'm leaving here down below that will bring you to the Cauldron Feedback channel. And support me, please, in the Cauldron Feedback channel. Thank you, guys, and I'll catch you next time.